a world full of mundane podcasts. One show rises from the ashes. Critics are calling it outrageous. Podcasts as we know it will never be this again. Tonight, prepare for an epic journey where every step could be your last. The destination, a place where no maps can show. The mission, to rise above the rest. The danger, unimaginable. The reward, a shit top we laughs. It's going to blow your mind. This is Two B Blood. So sit back, turn up the volume, grab your weed, get ready to light those blunts. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. blunt yet for christ's sake i haven't even lit the blunt <coughs> man it's a good time to be excited man we're back from the holiday hiatus that's it it's yeah. 2020 it's a new year we're, we're hung over from hanukkah we're after we're post boxing day we uh kwanzaa's kicked and uh the christmas trees have been smoked well, Scott, I don't know about you, but I did not celebrate any of those holidays you mentioned. <laughs> I don't even know what he's talking about. He's talking about Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, <laughs> Boxing Day, anything, everything we didn't celebrate. <laughs> Literally everything that we didn't celebrate. I know you smoke those Christmas trees, though. Come on. Well, I mean... I mean, it doesn't differ. I don't smoke more trees because it's Christmas. It's just a normal, normal amount. If anything, I think I smoked a little less this year because I spent the holidays with my family, so... Oh, nice. I was, you know, locked up. That's right. You were down south. I was in South <laughs> Florida, yep. It you rained were... one night six and a half to seven inches. What? One, one night. In one night. Wow. One night, and I was driving. In you were driving? Us, cars were floating on the highway as I was driving by them. Every, you know, listen, if there's one thing cars do in Florida, it's two things. They're either floating in the rain or they're blowing tires. Dude, you ain't kidding. Or they're overheating. I can't. Think. Yeah. Dude, literally, I remember I was on the highway driving. I was on my honeymoon. And we were driving from Orlando or Tampa down to Marco Island. Nice. And I must have seen at least three cars blow tires out. Because it's so fucking hot. And that shit literally will just fucking blow up. It's true. And there's a lot of uh, contractors down there. And there's also a lot of messed up people that will just go to Home Depot, buy a box of nails, and just spend all day littering the highways. <laughs> That's devastating. I've heard stories of this, yeah. Dude, that is literally the most devastating thing I've heard yet. I can imagine someone buying a fucking box of nails inside you. <laughs> Some people have, you know, real sick minds, yeah, man. Real sick minds. Damn. Well, we got a big show today. You know, first show 2020. Happy New Year to all our listeners. We got a big show. I wonder, is the Scott going to continue the streak? We're going to find out tonight. We got a special edition of Stump the Scott, where the fans have given us questions That's to true. ask the Scott to oh, see wow. if he can be stumped. That is it's going to be huge. Sports should be hot. The NFL's hot right now. Frank Knox, I'm sure, is going to cover all that. The phone lines are open. 860-384-7110. And, uh, 
Yeah, it should be interesting. Speaking of the Scott, the Scott was over at Raw tonight. So, I mean, I, I'm expecting last no week. selling. Last week, not well, tonight. Uh, well, Monday, 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 Monday. Monday. I'm Monday. expecting the Scott to be uh, have a special no selling tonight because you were there live. Yeah, no, you were I there was. live. Um, we're gonna get some war stories. We're gonna get. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. But first, before we go any further, something we got to do. And it's my favorite part of the show, right? I have here the King Palm loaded for the first time ever. We have the Scott roll the blunt for us. That's right. <laughs> the first time ever, the Scott has rolled the blunt. And we're going to find out how well this hits because it is time to smoke the blunt. So I ask you we'll guys. We'll find out if it's lit or it's the shit. <laughs> 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 right. Listen, I didn't do anything different than anybody else. So I don't, dude, was it the first time you ever rolled a blunt? Uh, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I'm we, gotta, sure. we have to speak of the first time Scott did something else last time we were together, too. Oh, that's right. We're we'll right. have to get into that later. Let's not try yeah. to forget. We'll I wish we had an intern. I hope, we don't, I hope we remember. Yeah, let's let's see. We're let's one, smoke the blood. Yeah. Let's talk about it. So I ask you guys, are you ready? We're ready, Peasy. I said, are you ready? I'm ready, baby. Let's light that thing up. That's right, then. For the three of us in this podcast studio. And the hundreds listening at home or watching live on the Facebook live stream. Ooh, let's get ready to smoke it. Tell them, Frank. And if you're not down with that, we got two words for you. Smoke, smoke it. it. <laughs> That's right, baby. The King Pom is loaded. It's about to get litty right here on the 2B Blood Podcast. <laughs> Oh, man. We have the blunt lit. Official lighting of the blunt. This week's strain of the week, Mach 1. That's right, baby. We're starting right off. Mach 1. Mach 1 is the alien cookie, which is crossed with a hybrid of Colombian and Starfighter. <coughs> and let me tell you. Colombian. Do I yeah. dare what's asked that <laughs> those those crystals are made of? That's right. No, I don't listen. So you mock. can't sniff this weed, all right? <laughs> mock, can, like the razor? Is it pronounced mock or mac? It's not like pock or pack, is it? I don't know. You, you listen. You want to talk about? Pock? I don't know which one to even call it. But I look at the screen. <laughs> pock or pack. He rolls one blunt. Now he wants to correct you on strain names. I'm just asking. Here. I just I just want to make sure I I, I heard well, it right. According to the bag, I mean, I think you were right, Scott. I think it listen. is mac one. If what? Pac is Pac or Pack, what is he? Pac or Pack? I guess he's Pack. I don't know. I, I don't even know. I don't even know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We should ask him how to pronounce it. We should. We should. <laughs> the Mach 1, or Mac 1, as the Scott would say, <laughs> is that gorgeous resin covered flower with a dank gasky. Gasky. Listen, a gasky. I did it again. <laughs> oh, no. This shit's fire. Take three. <laughs> Here you go, Frank. Take this away. Yeah, I rolled a damn good blunt. That's what I did. <laughs> the dank gassy <laughs> musk and sour citrus highlights. The smooth flavors of mock or mac, as the Scott would say, have thick, zesty orange notes that are balanced out by floral accents and a sweet, earthy finish. Doesn't that sound amazing? That does sound good. It sounds amazing. It's like it when you read. Smells good. It's like when you read these beer descriptions. Speaking of beer descriptions, the Scott, what are you drinking on this week? Oh, that's right. So this week, appropriately named enough, I'm drinking a beer from Treehouse. Of course, it only took me uh, my third beer of the week to actually have a Treehouse beer, as I wear their hat and their hoodie here. Uh, this beer is called New Decade, and there it is. It's got the 2020 logo on it. It's got the fireworks popping off. A uh, new decade is a celebration of a decade of growth, evolution, and unrelenting dedication to fresh and progressive beer at Treehouse. We push the malt content in New Decade to allow for a cosmic hop charge of our favorite American hops. It is immensely juicy. Let's see that can. Bam, there it is. Immensely juicy. Yeah. Well, Scott comes prepared beer of the week. So, I mean, what's your opinion on the beer? Oh, I, the first one I had... Uh, a couple days ago, I did have it before. Uh, I gave it like a four and a half out of five on my little app. Um, I don't know if my taste buds are a little off today, but this one, I, it doesn't it doesn't live up to that 4.5. That me. happens to me very often. So maybe it's my palate. I don't know what. Time out. Time the fuck <laughs> out. Look what's happened here, Frank. Look at this. There's Look a, at this. There's a canoe. Look at this. There's a fucking canoe. This thing's floating down the street. It's on the stream, bro. Just like I was in it's South Florida. It's floating like canoe, the cars bro. in South Florida right <laughs> now. So what happened? What, what did I do wrong? Ca- it's 
a new one. You didn't pack it good enough. You didn't pack it See how the one side's higher and the other side's burning low? Wait, that means you I got... didn't pack it good enough or I didn't pocket good enough? You no! <laughs> <laughs> no! I'm not even sure if you pocked it or packed it. Whatever you did, you did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. We're in fucking trouble. Well, that blunt is the shits for this week. We'll put, Scott, add it to your shit list. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. It's been the shit, baby. It was my first time. Oh, my God. Well, Scott brought beer. But you know what? I got something special for today. This past week, I have been on a bench. All right? I have been drinking some special shit that I brought for you guys to try. All right. I've oh. heard about this. I've this heard too. It's fucking screwball. They should be paying me for this fucking promotion right now. All right. This screwball. Screwball is, for those of you that don't know, a peanut butter whiskey. All right. This shit I have been literally drinking for the past week straight. I've been mixing this shit with like cold coffee and fucking half and half, bro. And it makes like a delicious after dinner drink. Oh, wow. It's sweet. All right. So. Since it's sweet, you don't really drink a lot of it. At least not straight. You know, you got to mix it with something. So you got something mixed in there or drinking it on the rocks? No, you're drinking it straight. <laughs> Is there ice cubes? There's some ice cubes in here. I mean, the the bottle's great. I mean, when I first seen it, I was like, man, too bad fi- Fireball didn't package their shit like that. Wouldn't it be 99 cents a nipper? So, fellas, I cheers you. You guys have got double cups. I got a single cup. Mine's not going to leak through, is it? I hope not. <laughs> We'll find out. Better drink it fast, Scott. Oh, you that better... smells like straight up jiffy. Mm. <sighs> Ooh. Oh, my God. I'm a whiskey guy. Me too. Wow. Me too. I'm this not, is but good. I might start to be with this one. This is good. It's smooth. I, I, it's I get smooth it. It's smooth, and I'm telling you when you mix it, it's Ooh. like an after-dinner drink. I would never mix it. Oh, oh dude, God. that's what you would if you tried my little my little mixture. You I'm know? Not, I like whiskey on the rocks, and this is just like has the subtle. It's like a dessert. Yeah, it's it's delicious. It's delicious. I mean, I drank whis- whiskey on the rocks <laughs> all weekend. So. That was literally my, my holiday drink. It's a and good I, one. And I've been literally drinking this shit since like Christmas. All right, so uh, oh, the, the hits go. keep on coming, so I, I, we, we didn't the, have a show oh, before Christmas. Oh, so I got, I got some Christmas gifts here. Get it baked! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the glasses say get it baked. And this if you, is great. If you remember the Frank Knox top five Chris or Halloween candies, this is my number one, man. This yeah. Is like the well, that was like your number one and number two. This is the mecca of them all. But there's something to go in those glasses. So I don't know, PZ, you want to do since you're facing hard cam, maybe? Wait, I don't know. you're not going to tell me that what you have here is. Bit of the bubbly. It might be. I don't know. You want to undo it here? Oh. Whoa. I didn't of the bubble. Now we have our own. Get what is that? Bank. What is that? No, that's not the official. Oh, the official. That's the official. Oh, we're getting a, we're uh, getting ooh, a little bit of the bubble. <laughs> it's going to be a long night. It's going to be a great show. I mean, no, I won't pour that up yet. We're going to save that. Okay. We'll I just poured it. the whiskey. Let me sip on this, Scott. I got a show to run. Oh, yeah, I don't want to pop the cork down. I got a show I don't want to ruin any of this equipment. I haven't seen you guys since before fucking Christmas. How was your holidays? Mine was great, man. I was got to spend some time with you know my my family in Florida. You were and live I, in Miami. I was live in Miami. I got to do some partying, going out. Did you go to uh, the, that Miami game? No, I didn't end up going. Oh, Frank, oh. not oh, the my, sports. Let's look at the live review. Yeah, but it was the best game of the weekend too, which is the shittiest part. Man. Went to overtime. Damn, and bro. my friend down there is a huge Cowboys fan. It was Cowboys winner go home, so he's like, dude, I'm not missing this game. So I didn't get to go. But the holidays were great. Scott, how was your holiday? Oh, dude, it was great, man. Um, I uh, did a lot of drinking with my family. Um, well, drinking all sorts of things. Of course, my beers, some Sambuca, some Kahlua. Uh, so bad, actually, that my nephew actually had to drive me home that night. The same nephew from Taco Bell? Not the same nephew. This is actually the other one. But... Um, so yeah, that's what I did, and then uh, of did course, we talk about that last show. Uh, no, no, we, we, we I hit, it was directly <laughs> after the last show. And Are I you sure you we didn't talk about it the last show? Yes, because I was like, "Damn, too bad we're not having a show this week." Because I would have loved <laughs> to talk about it, and then I was like, "You know what, Scott? Send over the number. We're calling oh my a line." God, over there. that's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So after the last show, the fucking Scott over here needed to grab some. I did him a favor. Well, yeah. He needed to grab some medicine for for someone else. It wasn't for him. He's not a smoker, as you guys already know. So, Scott, 
I clearly has never purchased marijuana before. This is true. So, Frank, would you like to tell the story? I feel like you were there and you. Uh, were- yeah, I did Scott a favor. I went and picked up the medicine. And I was like, hey, meet me at Taco Bell. Cool. So, let me back up. First, Scott's like, yeah, I'm going to go to the bank. I'll follow you to TD Bank. Then he goes to Liberty Bank, doesn't even notify me there's a change in difference. I'm sitting there <laughs> waiting eight location. minutes. I never knew we were doing TD Bank, but okay. Um, <coughs> you told him TD Bank, you said. You said, yo, follow me. You said, yo, I'll follow you. I was like, I know there's a TD Bank if you want to go there. You're like, all right. And then you went to Liberty because you're like, oh, I totally forgot there was a Liberty Bank right here. <sighs> and then I called you up and you're like, oh, yeah, my bad. I forgot to tell you. So whatever. I go get the product. I think I called and you didn't pick up. I think and this then, is what happened So at first. I'm at Taco Bell and. I've noticed that Scott is uh, facing Washington Street, you know, the busiest street in Middletown. Right. Facing there where there's lights on, but he's parked in the corner of the parking lot, so there's no spot to park to the right of the Scott, but only the left. What? But however, Scott had, like, a middleman courier delivery dude <laughs> in between me and in his, in his car, which was the guy he was giving the, the weed to. Right. So, so there's now three cars there. Now there's three cars, and I'm on the end, and I have this, like, wedge between me and Scott. And you're the one that's got to give him the medicine. And he's the one that's giving me the money. <laughs> Didn't Scott try to Apple pay you? No, nothing. <laughs> he was like, oh, no, I, yeah, he did. But did I he ask you if he's going to send you an Apple pay? Yeah, but I needed. The, I wanted to just do the cash because I was. Then I would have had well, to stop you, the you team. Then you would have had to stop the team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 2020, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Can I send you an Apple pay for some weed? But this is where it gets even well, you worse. You want to take the Walmart gift cards. So he gets he gets the weed. Yeah. I make fun of him with the person like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Like, you shouldn't be parked next to him. Have you guys ever done this before? <laughs> Come to find out, neither of them probably have done it before. I know Scott definitely hasn't. I haven't. But Apparently then, the other person did. But then when he got the product, he like scurried to his car, got in the car, and they both drove to the parking lot behind Taco Bell at Price Chopper. To do the final transaction. Like, bro, well, you I had to tried. walk by him to get to your car. I tried Just to do it the there. Just drop the weed off and grab the money and go about your day. I, I tried. <laughs> and that other person was like, no. So you, you took the weed and you ended up going to a parking lot next door so you guys lot. could exchange the bag? Yeah, it was probably under a well-lit lamp. So let me, let me run this down. <laughs> you go to Taco Bell. You give Scott the weed. Yes. Scott drives the price shopper, which if you don't know... Is literally the store behind Taco Bell. That's probably like yeah. right. It's, it's adjacent it's the parking like 50 lot, feet away. Yeah. To, to, to give him the bag that he just gave you, and then, two feet away from there. And then the Scott drives back to Taco Bell, goes to the drive-through, and then eats food at Taco Bell. <laughs> Yeah, and I was in that line for like a solid 20 to 30 minutes. So apparently, it was normal. Why not just order your food at first? But you know what the worst part is? When Bro. we went to Price Chopper, Why not uh, order your apparently food we first? went the wrong way because apparently it's all one way throughout that drive through area. So I went, I guess, backwards. And yeah, there was totally a guy waving his finger at me like, you no, can't you, go this you way. You went the right way. I watched which way you guys went. That's the only way to get out. Well, the other I guess for that Wow. Yeah, why wouldn't you order I thought you were gone. You're still, you're still watching me. Who wouldn't order their food first? Who would just sit there as a non paying customer? <laughs> it's to like, no, they're going to be a paying <laughs> customer in like five minutes, but they have to get some drugs. I, I was worried I was still going to be in line oh, for the food, and then you're going to give me shit for that. So. My God. So you know, it's been an interesting week then. <laughs> so I've been waiting to hear this story. Yo, fucking Scott. This guy yo, literally is just like the worst at this shit. Fucking bullshit. bullshit. <laughs> That's what Frank was thinking the whole time he was trying to give you the shit. And I'm just trying to do it. But anyways, did the person enjoy that package that you gave them? Uh, as far as I know, they did, yeah. Because did you, did you, you didn't hold on to it for too long, so you didn't see how bad it smelled. But I mean, how, <laughs> how good it smelled? Well, and, yeah, great. <laughs> exactly. But in the Scots world, it would smell bad. Damn, yo. Scott, you went to Raw this week. I did. How the fuck did that go? So it was, you know, sometimes when you know a show is going to be bad, you got to make your own fun out of it. So, yeah. you know, it's the night before New Year's Eve, so I dress up. I got the New Year's hat. I got the 2020 glasses on. I saw this. I'm passing them around to people in my section or whatever. And I, I need to say, like, we had a good time. I mean, but Raw itself, like, um, I know a lot of people love to shit on the, the Lana Lashley angle. Hell, I've been shitting out on this podcast. But uh, for results, I mean, they got, like, the highest rating. But what I'll tell you is, when it comes to Raw, first of all, the weather was real shitty, okay? 
They look like, uh, if you remember, In Your House Beware a Dog. If you guys oh. know what I'm talking about. Because oh, there was right. lightning, rain, snow, slushiness. It was so, a messy mix. So I said, fuck it. I know Hartford's only like 20 minutes away from where I live. But I said, fuck it. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go get a hotel. Room. I was like, <laughs> so, oh, I, yeah, no. So you know it's going to go down. Oh, no. But I'm so. like, because like, I know I'm going to drink a lot. <laughs> and, you know, I'm worried about the, the, the slippery conditions out yeah, there. Yeah, all right. So, um, Scott, you would have got a room if Raw was in Middletown. Let's keep it real. I mean, you're probably right. You're probably right. As long as you knew the workers were going to be there. That's right. As yeah. long as there was a hotel if, with if, workers drinking afterwards, the yeah. Scott's if, if I could have booked the workers at my house, then, yeah, I'd get a hotel yeah. in Middletown, right? <laughs> um, but, uh... Uh, so I don't know if you go with the show or the hotel right now. But, go to the hotel. All right, we'll go just go hotel. We don't get to the show and they... they yeah, I want to hear all the other right? shit. So the hotel. So yeah, there's workers at the at the hotel bar. We got Mickey James is there. And, you know, I'm at the bar with her. Uh, we're throwing <laughs> drinks. I was, I was with... We were a bunch of stage people. Um, there were stage people. It's funny. They were... Um, they were bitching how they had to do all this setup for for the wedding, like all the extra work that they had to do to help set up all yeah. those extra pullers and the cake and all that bullshit. Uh huh. Um, and it's funny. I remember one guy. He was like, "Well, at least we don't have Bobby Roode anymore because Bobby Roode has like a trap door." So he's like, "At least we don't have to worry about that setup." But then another guy's like, "Oh, well, he's on Fridays anyway, so we don't even have to fucking worry about him." But anyway, <laughs> and uh, I was actually sitting at the bar next to the WE chef, the guy that like gets all the ingredients and does the catering. Uh, but we were bullshitting with him for a while. But what's funny is. Michael Hayes walks the place. Michael Hayes walks into the bar. Michael Hayes. And I kid you not, Mickey James, in her accent, this, this is her, and I quote, when Michael Hayes walks in, she goes, Mako Mako Motorcycle. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> what? He walks in the bar, that is exactly how she addressed him. Oh, Mako my God. Mako Motorcycle. So did you buy Mickey James a drink? Did you guys so, have green tea shots? I, no, I, did, I didn't buy her a drink. I didn't do any of that. Um, did it's you funny. offer to? I, I was actually, so the, uh, what was it? I was actually in the elevator with her, and it was funny. She had to tell me that she had to run back to the room to put Tanner on her legs. Wow. For whatever reason, yeah, and, and I in my head, uh, I'm like, sure. I, wish I could have uh, uh, volunteered for that, but anyway, <laughs> Scott would have loved to have been there. Um, so is Mickey so, drinking? Yeah, Mickey was drinking. So also at the bar though, we have Tyson kids there, Natalia's there, Devon and wow. Finley, and then Dana Warrior of course showed up at one point too. Um, but I don't. Why what did the she fuck tell is she even there? This? What was the what? big build up for fucking Michael Hayes? Why did she tell us Tyson kid? I know. Yeah. All the big Dave names are there. there. <laughs> but here's like the weirdest, like funny thing. So it's now it's probably like midnight, twelve thirty. I want to say it's just about last call, and we're watching the TV at the bar, and it's a celebrity poker game that's going on. Uh huh. And believe I shit you not. It was a wrestling celebrity poker game. So this was a poker game. I don't know if it was on like NBC Sports, whatever it was. And it's got Tanaka, Pat Tanaka, Chavo Guerrero, Justin Gabriel. There's probably somebody else in there. And then there was... The Shockmaster. What? Wow. And the we, Shockmaster. I, I was just cheering on the Shockmaster. Wow. Like, go all in, baby. You got this. Uncle Fred. <laughs> Fred Ottman, baby. The, Typhoon. The fucking, Tumbo. Come well, on, they baby. Find the go. Shockmaster to fit into that group. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. It made no sense to me. I thought I was dreaming. Doesn't I'm make any fucking sense. And I'm watching people play poker with wrestlers. I'm like, it's crazy. Imagine if Scott found out what casino that's at. He'd be there every other day. Apparently, it was Rivers, and I, I need to do some research on this. Is this locally? Is that New York? I feel like Rivers is not that far away. Is that one in New York? River, Sa- River City? Upstate? Something like that. Upstate New York? I don't know. I'm going to have to DVR the next time they do a red poker tournament, though. They have, that's a real thing. Apparently. Damn. So Scott's at fucking Raw I the night before New TV. Year's I Eve. I got to show you guys. I spent all yesterday... Partially recovering because all I did was sit home on New Year's Eve and drink this peanut butter whiskey, and I was lit, you know, looking at TikTok we'll videos. This, this peanut butter Master was real whiskey. lit. I was real lit. I was real lit. And so I'm spending yesterday hungover. I was one nothing but fucking the greasiest of foods, you know, which is, like, devastating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hangover snacks, man. Hangover snacks. I mean, dude, what's your, like, when I wake up and I'm hungover, this, like, I want, and it's fucked up. I want like McDonald's breakfast all day. I, that's what yeah. I had New Year's Day for breakfast. <laughs> Me bro. too, yo. Sausage, egg, and cheese McMuffin. Yep. Hash brown. Yep. With a sausage burrito. Oh, and give me that OJ on did the, the side. same thing the day after Christmas. Your boy was lit. You know what I did? Steak, egg, and cheese. 
That's With a sausage big muffin and a hash brown. <laughs> Whoa! Now that's the mecca, baby. I, didn't even, I couldn't even finish. Like, I think I gave half my big muffin to the fucking dogs. <laughs> McDonald's breakfast is clutch in those situations. That's my favorite shit. Every time. Scott, what's your go-to when you're fucking feeling So I usually always get, yeah, sausage egg McMuffin is usually what I get. Yeah. Um, so we're on the same page then. I, I love to go to Dunkin' too, but I hate Dunkin's Dunkin', Dunkin's not greasy enough. And to their help breakfast me. is the worst. Yeah. Dunkin's so I need the that worst. McDonald's. I don't do Dunkin' because I've had like at least one or two times I've bitten into the sandwich. It's ice cold, and that just like you want an egg sandwich. Last thing you want is ice cold. Come on, yeah, because their shit's like all microwaved, bro. Damn, yo, I didn't even like. Yeah, you're right. You're right. They do their microwave shit, like the sh- eggs yeah. and the sausage. Their and shit, shit isn't as solid as McDonald's. It's not even close, man. It's not even the same. It's not even the same. But like, if you got a favorite snack, you're tuned in. If you're watching on the Facebook, let us know. What is your favorite hangover snack? I mean, I want to know what the people think. We are all clearly on the same page. Sausage McMuffin. Here. Yeah, but oh, my, yeah. mine is usually always followed up with Chinese food delivery. So you will get Chinese food later in the day after sure. you've recovered from... Well, you, my hangover lasts all day. My, like, perfect hangover day is McDonald's breakfast and then Chinese food for either lunch or dinner. Yo, my hangover lasts all day, too, bro. Because now I'm just at that age where, like... Then you get the lo mein, the, you know, the general uh, sauce, the rice, the egg roll, the crab rangoons, and all this feast that, like... Yeah, Filipino. I hope you got enough flushable wipes for all that when you're done with it. Oh, my God. Then 860-384-7110, we want to know... What's your favorite hangover food? We're going to be taking a tally. We post got on the someone Facebook. that posted, you know, Chris, Krista Turnage posted two cheeseburger meal with a Coke from McDonald's. Two well. cheeseburger two meal. Cheeseburger That's the go-to. Meals. All right. All right. All right. I, See, I, I didn't so. even know they still had the two cheeseburger meal. Me neither. Meal. Is it? Me? Just get a double That's cheeseburger. What number is that? Time. Yeah, what number is that? I want to know what number that is. We'll have to find I feel like back in the day that was like a number two, but now it's probably got to be like number 30 something. I don't even think they have anything past like 12. So how can that be? I mean, that's crazy. Crazy. I know they had it. It's probably like a number six or a number nine. Maybe. Or a number eight. It I'm could just, be. I'm going to say every number will one because I know that's the big bug. <laughs> <man. laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking shit, bro. To be blood podcast. You already was about to get lit. It's about time for the bubbly soon. Yeah, we're going to be getting into the bubbly. We're going to be getting into the news. Sports with Frank Knox. No selling with the Scott. It's about to go down. To be blood podcast. Call in, comment on the Facebook. It's about to go down. When we come back, the To Be Blood newsroom opens up, baby. Yeah. Jumping up to yeah. die, something like a kangaroo. Yeah. When you with PZ, yeah. I'ma 
show you how to do the do. Pour you up some purple spray. Go and try my home. <laughs> Blood Podcast. We're back. And we're about to get into a little weekly news from this past week. We're going to get into a little sports. About to go down. So let's take it to the 2B Blood Newsroom. And now, when it comes to the best in weekly news, you get it live here at the 2B Blood Newsroom. It is to be blood. And we are live to be blood podcast, the weekly news. And man, it's been a week. So I've had time to pull in the best from around the world because that's what I do. I take my job very serious. And the first headline that we will topic or we will go through carjacker on meth. Abducts man and his pet goat from Missouri adult store. What, what the the goat? Why the goat? <laughs> dude. The goat? <laughs> dude, I'm telling you right now. Literally, a man was arrested in Oklahoma after carjacking a truck from an outside an adult store in Missouri. A porn store. So first you gotta imagine a guy was there at a porn store with his pet goat. All right. Right then and there, you know we got problems. Big yeah, problems. this sounds really bad. This is kind of <laughs> <laughs> oh, it does. <laughs> it does. It sounds terrible. Two men stopped at an adult video store in Catheridge early Wednesday. Police said the driver of the pickup truck went inside the store while the passenger and his pet goat, <laughs> mind you, remained in the truck, ultimately falling asleep. But the guy falls asleep with his pet goat in the car. How long the guy was in the adult store that he was able to fall asleep that fast is another questionable portion of the story. He was working that goat too much in the store. This is what happened. No, the, the goat was in the car with the guy who fell asleep. So then police said this guy, Brandon Kirby, jumped into the truck, took off, allegedly taking meth as he drove the passenger through parts of Kansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma, occasionally pistol whipping the guy as they drove. So every time the fucking guy would wake up, he'd hit him with the butt of the clip. Yo. I'd hit him with the butt of the fucking clip, bro. Oh no fucking lie. This really happened. So finally, the guy lets the fucking passenger and the fucking goat go on the side of the road in Oklahoma. So the guy calls OnStar and says, my car was stolen. So OnStar is able to control the speed of your car. So they jacked the guy down to 15 miles per hour in a cop chase. So I didn't know that was possible yeah. to control the speed of your car, but okay. Oh, yeah, they can do that shit. It's all built in. So the guy gets stopped. He jumps out of the car and runs off, dropping a mask and a gun. They found him hiding in tall grass near the highway. But this, the whole story is just unbelievable. This guy and his pet goat. Right? <laughs> We're at the board store. That's, yeah. What the fuck, bro? What the fuck? I honestly, that blew my mind. Next piece, Florida man fights gas pump. All right. Guy in Florida literally fights the gas pump. <laughs> Naples, Florida, man. Naples is right near where my mom lives, too, which is real funny. <laughs> yeah. She spends half a year right around Naples. It's on the west coast of Florida. That's right. So this man's facing charges after he allegedly punched and kicked a gas pump. <laughs> right. He unloaded on the unleaded. <laughs> so 24-year-old Hunter Bleach. Bletch. I don't know how to say that. Black. Black. <laughs> I told deputies. His rage was all over an argument he had it with his girlfriend. Maybe his girlfriend wouldn't pump him either. Oh. <laughs> no. I hope not. He should be the one doing the pumping. Blah. <laughs> was arrested and is facing a disorderly conduct charge. No word on who won the fight. You know, this is the this is it. You know, I mean, he punched the pump right in the schnozzle. <laughs> right in there. 
So now I gotta get into something that really grinds the gears. I find out fucking Comcast is eliminating the Stars Channel. The fucking Stars Channel. All right. I have no premium channels with the exception of the fucking Stars Channel. <laughs> That's all I got. And now Comcast is dicking you over. That's all I got. Wait a second. We have a caller? We have a caller right here. Uh, Two Be Blunt Podcast. What's your name? Where you calling from? <laughs> wow. Wow, bro. Can you imagine? They just hung up in our face. They just hung up. No good jabronis. No good they, fucking. They probably actually ran to go check if they still have stars or yeah, not. You <laughs> probably, you, yeah, you probably got them. Yeah. He found the delay, so he's probably, I picked up, he probably heard stars. Holy shit, gone. power's coming out this weekend. I need to know who shot Ghost. No, so Comcast, they're selling the channel to you and Universal. Or NBC Universal, I should say. But they're going to let the stars roll out until the finale of power, apparently. Oh, well, that's good. You know? Yeah. I planned on dropping my stars as soon as power was over anyways, so it works out for me, brother. Well, fucking, I guess this is just another reason for Bernie Sanders to hate corporations. You know, this is bullshit. This is bullshit, you know? And the worst part is they're not going to lower your bill for this, right? They're just taking it away. Well, it's a premium channel. You pay extra for that no matter what. Yeah. That's right. They so were just going to get rid of it without no one looked at it. It must be part of their new initiative when they called it. We were hoping you wouldn't notice. <laughs> when you go to watch fucking Power or some shit and it's gone. It's unbelievable. unbelievable. I did see Stars was offering some like deal you could get six months for like nineteen ninety nine. Really? From the Stars app. I actually saw it today, so this is probably part of, part of the uh, blowback from Comcast dropping them. Oh, very well could be. And then this next story actually came from, you know who? The Scott, who sent me this story that blew my mind. Quebec racing legal age for cannabis to 21, which is the strictest in the entire country of Canada. Does that make sense to you? Quebec, you know, people who live in Quebec under the age of 21 won't be able to buy or possess recreational marijuana as of Wednesday. But if they want to purchase cigarettes or alcohol, 18's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I used to think uh, I could go to Canada. That means I could do anything. That's what I used to consider. That's what people go to Canada for. There's, it used to be 16. You'd be, I think you could drink in Canada up until really 10 years ago. Yeah. I didn't even know that. That's, I mean, that's that's actually a whole other story. They I mean. got Liddy. They just 16? Wanted, I think it might have been. Dude, I mean... <laughs> But it makes no sense. You could drink at 18, but you, can, you can't smoke unless you're 21. Come That's on. right. You're old enough to drink and drive, but not old enough to smoke and eat chicken nuggets. Well, drinking and fuck? smoking at the same time is a whole nother beast. Like, I don't even fuck with that. Ah, uh, what? Again, real lit, and then smoking again, real lit. I get the spins. Oh, I know. I love smoking, right? Especially at the end of the night, after a long night of drinking, laying know. in the bed. Taking a little bit of a, a little couple of rips off the vape pen or the fucking the bowl, whatever's on my nightstand, you know what I mean? And get lit right into there. Not and I. Then, Not I. That's fine. That's fine. Maybe the users do. I don't know. But lastly, the most amazing of all the stories. This is huge breaking news. Snoop Dogg announces Lullaby album, adapting his greatest hits for babies. That's, That's awesome. Good. Dude, anyone with a kid probably familiar with how annoying listening to the same fucking songs over and over and over again. Baby Shark, do, 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 do. That's probably <laughs> all you fucking hear as a parent yeah. for like a year straight. I mean, parents all around the country are going nuts. You know, imagine trying to get your child back to sleep at 4 a.m. And then just as you start singing the same tired lullaby, you think to yourself, I wish I could be singing Snoop Dogg's Doggy Dog World. Maybe Gin and Juiced. Yeah. Maybe next episode from Dr. Trey. I mean, what might it be? Well, the thing is, yeah, you're in luck. Snoop Dogg's doing just that. He's going to get your child hooked on the rapper's greatest hits. <laughs> Starting the day they're born. It's going to be amazing. Parents around the world. I mean, this is a huge breakthrough. Snoop Dogg announced he'll be releasing a children's album, The Rockabye Baby. Lullaby renditions of Snoop Dogg. Rockabye yeah. baby, drop it like it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to contain his greatest hits, including drop it like it's hot, gin and juice, sensual seduction. I don't even know what the fuck that is. I never even heard that song, by the way. Do you know what that song is? Yeah. How come I don't know? He just, yeah, it's, it just it's, says it's, those words over Yeah, I know, I know what that song is. It was like one of his later, oh, it features somebody else too. 
No, I wanna... his songs always feature somebody. <laughs> That's because he freestyles all his shit. You know. Yeah, you actually you looking it up? Yeah. I'm about to get that breaking news right here from the fucking Frank Knox. Let's hear it. What is it? Oh, you want to hear it? I thought you were going to tell me. No, I can't hear the song. It's, it's copyrights. It's, it's copyrights. It's nobody. Oh. It's is, is the, when he does gin and juice, is it now going to be gin and juicy juice? <laughs> it might be gin and chalky milk. <laughs> <laughs> gin, gin and chalky milk. <laughs> Going, what is it? Sipping on gin in my mama's titty. Lay back. <laughs> oh, my God. And on that note, let's hit into sports with Frank Knox. When it comes to sports, there's only one man for the job. The best analysis in the game right here from the 2B Blood Newsroom. It's Frank Knox. Right from the 2B Blood Newsroom, Frank Knox with sports. What's going on, Frank? Peasy, what's going on, brother? So, breaking news. You know, since the last time we've been on air, I was talking about the uh, Devontae Wilder and Tyson Fury fight. It's That's official. Right. February 22nd, it's happening. The rematch is on. There's unfinished business. Both fighters undefeated besides the draw they have with one another in their December 2018 fight. Oh. Wow. Well, Something I just want to mention on the air. It has to do with sports because a sports star, one of my all-time favorite basketball stars, Kevin Garnett, was the co-star of this movie. Uncut Gems with Adam Sandler. Highly recommend it. I saw it. Five stars. Fire. <laughs> Epic ending. Could have been better. I loved it. So it's a big week, man. You know, you got the college football playoffs in full swing. You got the NFL playoffs, you know, coming up this weekend. And it's the biggest week in football. I mean, we had Clemson squeak out a win against Ohio State. They haven't lost in like 29 games. Their quarterback has never lost in his career. Wow, undefeated. Undefeated. Fucking and, Goldberg. And they're going to be facing <laughs> off with the number one ranked team, the LSU Tigers, who destroyed Oklahoma this past weekend. Oh, man. I mean, Joe Burrow, the Heisman winner of 2019-2020 season, Put up seven touchdowns in less than three quarters. Shut up. So seven it was a TDs. squash match. Squash. It was I think a it was squash like, match. I think it was like 52-14 at the, you know, but it ended up being like uh, 63-28 to 28 or something like that. All right. All right. It was the final <laughs> score of that game. But, I mean, one of the biggest stories that, you know, I'm going to have to talk about this week is the NFL playoffs, man. I That's mean, right. We got the AFC on full swing on Saturday and the NFC in full swing on Sunday. We got the Bills at the, the Texans. Here I'm taking the Bills, man. They're giving up. I mean, they're getting two and a half points, and I think the Bills have a great defense from top to bottom. This is the year for Bills Mafia Yo, to be. go to the AFC Championship. <laughs> might game. be. I mean, I've been waiting 10 years to see the Bills in the playoffs. You see what these guys do during the regular season. Yeah. Tables are on fire. Yep. You know, <laughs> cutters through tables, power bombs. I mean, these guys are out of control. Lit. Straight lit. <laughs> we could get a Bills home game at any point during this playoffs. It's going to be a win for the entire world. I'll tell you that, guys. That'd be crazy. Now, this is a game where it's going to be tough. It's Peasy's own team, the Titans. Oh, I don't want to talk about it. Coming into New England on prime time on Saturday night. No, But guess bro. what, ladies and gentlemen? I think this is it. Tom Brady and the Bill Belichick error comes to an end Wait a on second. Saturday night. No! Because Ryan Tannehill, Woo! Derrick Henry, Woo! and the Tennessee Titans right. are coming to town behind ex-linebacker Mike Vrabel, legend for the New England Patriots. He's bringing his boys back to where he won rings. That's and right. And he's taking out the greatest dynasty in professional football. And when that finally happens, all the Patriot fans got two words for you. You can suck it. Because I've been saying for years, the Titans are the team, baby. We've hit a rough patch for the past, I don't know, eight fucking years. But now we're back. Since, <laughs> since they were one inch from the, the Super Bowl. Yeah, literally. Yeah, one inch, yeah. Literally yeah, one inch from the Super Bowl. Prediction right there if I ever heard one, though. So that's it. So that's it. Now, Sunday, we got 
some big games as well, fellas. We got the Vikings at the Saints. Saints are giving up eight points. Saints look like the best team in the NFL, maybe behind the 49ers. They're 1A, 1B at this point, taking the Saints. All right. Seahawks all right. at the Eagles. The Eagles limped into the playoffs. So they true. Limped in. The Seahawks <laughs> been looking great. They had a couple of tough losses. But you cannot count out Russell Wilson. Cannot count out Pete Carroll. I'm looking at the Seahawks to advance. All right. Oh, here we go. Seahawks might be taking it. And then I'm going to wrap up my sports section with the passing of a living legend this week at the age of 77, the NBA commissioner from 1984 to 2014, David Stern. Oh. I mean, Stern. I didn't know this. Stern turned basketball into what we know it as today. I mean, he increased the pop- popularity tremendously in the 90s and 2000s. True. He's devel- he's he developed the international reach for the NBA today, establishing training camps and exhibition games in Mexico and Japan. I mean, he helped the NBA go from one country to over 200 countries and 40 different languages. The <laughs> NBA wouldn't have the players like Dirk Nowitzki, Luka Doncic, you know, these international flair, Tony Parkers, all these guys that came from different parts of the world, if yep. it wasn't for David Stern. And he was a true legend, man. And I just wanted to give a toast to him and say, rest in peace, David Stern. Big news. We lost a huge member of the sports community, a top five influential of all times when it's all said and done. Wow. Wow, that's that's sports with Frank Knox. That's I guess. it, and I'll be back maybe later in the show for my top five wrestlers of the decade. Oh, wow! wow. I Wait got a, a second. Top five. I'm going back to my roots of wrestling. I'm going to give you my top five of the decade. I mean, you want to do that now or later? Let's do it later. You let's know, do it let's, later. Uh, all right, all right. Fair let's, enough. You know, fair let's enough. not go back to back Frank Knox segments. <laughs> Frank, everybody loves the Frank Knox segments. You know. Well, let's get into our next favorite. <laughs> no salad with the Scott, baby. And now, bringing you the best and worst of pro wrestling today, the smartest mark in the building, he is the Scott. To be blunt podcast. That's right, no selling. Hey, that's my line, you son of a bitch. (laughs) You better come up with your own intro, all right? Stop can I, can give I, it infringement. Can I rent it? Can I give you $10? Well, we might be able to work out a deal. Oh, oh hey, wow. we're popping the bubbly up in here. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> I, I jumped, too. I wasn't ready for it. That's why we were live on here. We got a little bit of the bubbles. <laughs> well. All right. So, we're popping the bubbly over here. And this is this is not just any no-selling with the sky. This is no-selling for the year. I'm talking about the year 2019. What was lit and what's the shits. So I'm really? starting right off right now was promotion expansion, okay? Obviously, the number one that comes to mind, AEW, right? So they get themselves a primetime TNT deal, and they're just a start of promotion. That's huge for them. Take a sip of bubbly for AEW. Easy, you, got your, you got your cup, you got your gimmick. And then aside from AEW, we have the rise of NWA. They came back, right? National Wrestling Lions. It's a YouTube sensation with an old school feel, making the making out the best of what they have. Um, notable names are there, and new stars are being made at the same time. And then oh. we have New Japan Pro Wrestling, right? Now, New Japan, very successful in Japan, of course, but their expansion in the United States, right? They had the G1 Supercard with Ring of Honor, right? Um, at Madison Square Garden, it was huge. I was actually at that event, and it was amazing. True. Um, and then, of course, WWE. And I know everybody's like, well, WWE, I mean, they're the biggest promotion there is. But <sighs> expanded in their own. You had NXT a get a USA bubbly. Network deal. And on top of that, you had Fox becoming the new home to SmackDown Live, which is huge for them. Yeah, it is huge. The ratings might say it yet, but it is huge for them. I mean, did anybody else watch it New Year's Eve? I mean, WWE was all over that Fox Network, so... Anyway, but when it also comes to promotions, there's also the shits. And one that comes to mind used to be highly respected, and that's Ring of Honor. Right? The highest they were, their, their height of the year was definitely that G1 Supercard. But I credit a lot of that to their affiliation with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Okay. Okay? Yep. But now you've had uh, some, some 
I, I guess I'll just call them rumors, but they leaked, where uh, their women's champion was only making about $24,000 a year. What? Right? Um, they don't have a sort of any uh, concussion protocol. Oh, God, I don't want to talk about that. And it just, uh, from, from leaks from Joey Mercury, who was a former Ring of Honor producer, uh, is just a complete... Um, Those leaks were crazy, by yeah, the way. Just it, it seems like there's a complete um, apathetic demeanor from the management at Ring of Honor. So, uh, one's highly regarded, but, you know, in 2019, they were the shits. Um, <laughs> anyway. True. Back to what was lit. What was lit, for me, for this crew here, was the entire WrestleMania 35 weekend. Okay? <laughs> That's true. It was awesome. We were there, okay? <laughs> That's right. So, I might be a little biased, but... <laughs> From everything, from Kofi Mania, from being at Gor- Organic. From riding in that 1987 limo. <laughs> <laughs> from the House of Glory. That's right, we did get a, we did get a limo. and from it was Frank an Knox old... Lauren like a bassaw. That's <laughs> right, we, we, did, we went to the House of Glory. Dude, from the sick. 3 a.m. drive home in the torrential downpour. Sorry, you guys at House of Glory. <laughs> that was incredible. We did have a limo for WrestleMania. It might have been the same limo that Vince McMahon blew up in. I'm not sure because it was that run down. Um, but anyway... So Kofi Mania happened. We got to see the final matches ever for Kurt Angle and Batista, right? True. Um, the women for the first time ever got to main event of WrestleMania, huge. Um, and then I went on Saturday night. I went to the G1 Supercard, which is amazing. Um, I got to see in the opening match in a huge battle royal, uh, Juice and Thunder Liger and Great Muda have a standoff. Like that was just cool for me. Really? Um, and we then- saw Great Muda on uh, that that Saturday at House of Glory. Yeah, we did. You're right. And You're you right. saw the Enzo and Big Cass invasion. That was a I big did, moment. Yeah. And that yeah. was a big Nobody moment in wrestling this on. year. Yeah. And uh, Kota Bushi and Naito, I'll tell you, they just they tore the house down at that G1 Supercard. And then I was also at NXT Takeover New York. Right. So every match was incredible. All five matches were incredible. But that Gargano Cole two out of three falls match. Holy shit! That has gone down. That was the first WWE match that ever in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter got above a five-star rating. It was a 5.5, really? and it was an amazing match. Um, but the best part about that weekend is right before WrestleMania, we went to the Bullet Club block party. That's right. And we Oh, were, my God, that was lit. Not that only was, was Jimmy Seafoods with the best crab cakes on the planet, but we got to fucking play cornhole with Haku. You can't top that. You just can't. Yeah, no. That, dude, true. I still have the picture of you. <laughs> Throwing bags with Haku. We'll put it up on the, the, the social media page. We'll put it on the Instagram. Um, but with good shows of the year in 2019, there's also some bad shows. So we got to talk about Super Showdown, or as like PZ likes to call it, Super Shit. Down. Anything, <laughs> super that, ha- anything shit that happens down. in Saudi Arabia is <laughs> yeah. just shit. So that's the thing. If it's already in Saudi Arabia, it's already going to have a negative connotation, right? Oh, yeah. But... The main event ruined that show and the other show. I'm going to talk about Hell in a Cell. But first, we're going to talk about that super showdown, right? Goldberg, he just ran out of gas. He busted <laughs> his head. I mean, I know it was over he was 100 gassed, degrees, right? but he, he couldn't get up for anything. I mean, that was just a terrible, terrible, was, terrible match. He was knocked out. And you could see he that Undertaker was, yeah, Undertaker was visibly upset. Um, but, I mean, uh, what can you expect? I mean, could I... Be fifty plus and and get in a ring in Saudi Arabia at hundred degrees? Absolutely not. So I mean, uh, whatever. But we'll get to the next one that was the shits, and that was Hell in a Cell. <laughs> now Sasha and Becky. They oh had God, a Hell great, in a Cell, bro. Sasha and Becky had a great match at Hell in a Cell, but the, the rest of the show was just overshadowed by the shits that was Seth Rollins versus the Fiend. That it was just they can speak for itself. I know the internet's probably still going crazy about it, and not be able to to get any sleep because of it. But anyway. Hell in a Cell, they need to rename it, like, Crap in the Mat or something. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> so. That was, I mean, the wrestling world's still upset about that. Yeah. So, anyway, next I got some superstars that were lit in 2019. So, I got to start off. Roman Reigns made his big return back from his battle with leukemia. So, props to him. Huge, uh, huge moment that was for him to return. And then, um, also, I mean, of course, Kofi Mania and Kofi Kingston and his rise to main event status. Um, we had some reinventions along the way, right? We saw Bray Wyatt completely reinvent himself. And everybody was real skeptical at first when we first saw that Firefly Funhouse. But what he's been able to do with it, absolutely amazing. The most intriguing thing, uh, probably in wrestling television right now, I would say. Definitely in WWE. Um, on top of reinventions, I also want to talk about uh, the reinvention of Jonathan Good. When I say Jonathan Good, do you guys know who I'm talking about? 
Nope. Nope. <laughs> no idea, right? Because nobody knows about his real name. But anyway, it was the transformation of Dean Ambrose to John Moxley. Uh, just being able to have that little bit more freedom with his character um, was just huge, and it was huge for AEW. Um, anyway, with that, some superstars that were lit. There were also some superstars that were the shits. And this is my favorite one. I can't although, wait to hear this. <laughs> This one, the first one I have, doesn't really go to, to him so much. It's more of the creative behind it. And that's Shorty G. I mean, come on. Shorty G. He's Shorty Chad G. fucking Gable, all right? It's devastating. So it's not his fault he's on the shit list. But he is a former Olympian, okay? But you know what? He's probably getting paid good money. And if you paid me what he's getting paid and called me Turd Ferguson, I'd fucking do it. But anyway, next next, next uh, names I got. The Revival. We saw the decline of the Revival, although they did hold the tag team titles this year. They hold the Raw and the SmackDown tag titles this year. But we just saw the decline of them. And um, I, I, what I'll never get out of my head is, do you guys remember that Usi Hot segment? No. Uh, you know, oh, they, wait, with the Revival? With the, Well, it's Revival, but Usos. Yeah, Usos, the Usos. Was, yeah, of course. They, they put Usi Hot on their tights, <laughs> and it was just <laughs> made them look like complete fucking morons. Usi Hot. Anyway. And there's also, of course, EC3, and it's not his fault because they just didn't do a goddamn thing with him. Um, and then um, there's this guy, okay? And that's Lars Sullivan, okay? <laughs> so Lars Sullivan starts the year off. He's got a lot of hype videos going on, uh, promoting that he's coming to WWE, and it just gets delayed and delayed and delayed. And the rumor is he's supposed Boy, to have we- a... A big match with John Cena at WrestleMania, and it doesn't happen. Supposedly, he has anxiety. Oh, no, not the anxiety. And uh, they, they held him off coming in. So, then he finally debuts, but it doesn't last long because then he's injured. Okay? And then... <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Yeah, what's wrong? Fuck. Frank tries to tell me to mute it so he can tell me something. Not thinking that yeah, you, we you can you still hear everything that you're saying. Okay. Say it, I so can hear everything he says. So I'm going to keep going because, because um, you know, Lars Sullivan, I want to say how he ended the year. And, um, I mean, he ended the year with a bang, I guess you could say. I don't know. Yeah, Apparently. I guess so. Apparently. I don't know. Uh, it depends who you ask. It depends on who you ask. But I guess he ended the year with a bang. Anyway. So, um, on top of that, uh, also some superstar shits is it was the return of Lana, Lashley, and Rusev. And as soon as they came back, they were just putting this horrible storyline. Now, I was there live for Raw this week. I was there live for the wedding. It was awesome. I didn't have to get a wedding gift. It wasn't like your wedding piece. It was nothing like your wedding, okay? Um, Damn right it was. And, uh, but I'll tell you, everybody was on their feet the whole time. Um, and when it comes to Raw, like, the, uh, the, the, the Buddy Murphy, well, um, Sorry, the Buddy Murphy, uh, uh, Alistair Black match was absolutely amazing. Um, the Orton work was very well done, and the wedding. I mean, everybody was on their feet. But I'll tell you, these fucking fans, and I don't know if it's just Hartford, Connecticut, or if it's everywhere. But these fans, we they, we just live in the fucking past. Like it's a time war. Like the whole thing's going on, that whole wedding segment, and all the shit that went down in it, and people are chanting Jerry, Jerry, like. They're in the audience of a Jerry Springer show. So they're living in like it's 1998. I I wonder if they like forgot their laser pens or forgot to feed their Tamagotchis because they're just living in the past. Connecticut (laughs) is the home of Jerry Springer, though, Scott. You know, so there's. Well, that's like Stanford. That's actually closer to the headquarters. Maybe that's why they did all that bullshit. Anyway, but uh, based on the ratings, I think we're still going to get this storyline going on now. Shut the fuck up, bro. Shut the fuck up! But you're you're joking, now. There's no way they're gonna still let this shit fly. Yo, now you have the questions of um, what Jay was Crow this? Had sex and Shut the fuck up! <laughs> Yo, everybody wants to know what what was Liv and Lana's relationship now. So it's uh it's uh it's still going. Scott, I think you missed one thing for me in wrestling that'll be the shits is, and that is WWE 2K20. Oh yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. You want to talk about a shit game? That's everything I've heard of and worse. I see all the Twitch videos. I read an article today that they they released a new patch that has now made it completely unplayable. Now, listen, though. So I know 2019, right? I did just say a lot of shits, but I have some 2020 bold predictions real quick that I'm going to go through that will hopefully make this shit list or make this shit lit is what I was trying to say. Okay, anyway. 
So, bowl prediction number one. Sheamus is going to be your next Intercontinental Champion. Okay? Yeah, He's coming back. Fucking bullshit! I think your feud of the year this year is going to be on NXT, and it's going to be Finn Balor and Velveteen Dream. Motherfucker piece <laughs> of shit! Also, I'm expecting Drew McIntyre and Brock Lesnar to hook it up, and I think that'll be a great match. Um, here's what I have for AEW. Marty Skrull is going to join AEW. I want to hear it. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> but he's going to join the Dark Order. Dude, I don't even care. Fuck the Dark Order. Fuck, order. Don't fuck care. AEW. No. All right. The fuck show's got to go on, God Keep damn it. Go ahead. Go. I got more. The show must go on. I must warn you. Things can get a little trippy. He took off his pants. Yuck. Leave my podcast. All Sai wants to add his own segment in afterwards. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna add one. He's more. already got two segments. Bold predictions of the that. week, of oh, the year, of the year. Of the year. year. Good. Get him in. Unbelievable, un fucking believable. You gotta shoot the shit with me a little bit. I got some shit on the brain that I want to get into right here on the Two B Blood Podcast. It's been Hollow Week. And you know me. <laughs> I know you like you like my, my jam, huh? <laughs> Frank knocks on drums, everybody. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It is a good one. It is a good one. That would be a good idea. That would be a good idea. I was reading an article, okay? About it was based in Los Angeles. <coughs> And it was about crazy. <coughs> Why am I coughing? I didn't even hit the blunt. <coughs> Woo! Crazy HOA rules, bro. You know what HOA is? Housing. Uh, Ho- Homeowners Association. Association. All right? Homeowners Association. Crazy HOA rules. I mean, people, if you have a condo, like the Scott does, yes, sir. they have to pay HOA fees and they have rules. They have HOA rules, right? So this. Las Vegas Journal put out an article compiled of the worst homeowners association rules of all time, pulled from all around the county, Las Vegas, you know? And there's just like a bunch of ridiculous shit, like demanding garage doors be left open weekdays from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. to prove there aren't people living in your garage. What? <laughs> yeah. But you know what? It's Las Vegas, so I feel like they can make any rule in Las Vegas. Bro, what, what if that's where you keep your stash, though, in the garage? <laughs> 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., you come and rob my stash. <laughs> and it's legal there, here. so you can be growing plants in your garage. Yeah, fuck out of here. So a lot of people, though, they'll, they'll rent out for, like, vacations, like B&Bs, right? So you're telling me if I have a and e I have to know to keep my garage a B&B, open? not a and e a and b I said or, B&B. The second time you said b Trash can time limits, where they have to be off the road by noon. If you put them out in the morning, that sucks for you. Because Justin just, Roberts comes out and tells you, you have ten minutes for me every every week. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. I know exactly. Requiring the perfect shade of paint. Like I mean, there's crazy ass shit here. Lawns must be consistently green. Yeah. Well, what if it doesn't rain for fucking four months? <laughs> no blue Yo, trampoline covers. They are like in the desert, right? Like, yeah. You might have to get some spray paint for the lawn. No open window blinds, bro. Like, this is the most ridiculous shit. And the worst part is that usually you hear these commercials, right? Where people, they put out like, uh, they're like, oh, come, you know, purchase from us or rent from us, blah, blah, blah. And they try to make it sound like. Live in Las Vegas. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but what if they put out a real article? Like, if this shit was legit how things really are, you know what I mean? Where, like, they'll tell you straight up, this is how you have to live. And that's why they advertise it to you, because that's what it should be. You should know all the details, right? So something like this. Are you looking for a community free from the hustle and bustle of the world? Then welcome to Covenant Glen. When you move into Covenant Glen between the hours of noon and three every other Thursday, you'll discover a neighborhood of blue, brown, and green houses, free from litter, garage sale signs, wind chimes, clotheslines, flags, unrolled hoses, barking dogs, roaming cats, bird feeders, boats, RVs, and trucks in the driveway. 
A community where lawns are cut only on the diagonal. Where you can sit outdoors under your requisite four to six deciduous trees. And relax in the six-foot cedar fenced-in yard watching your not more than two children at quiet play on their non-metal swing sets before the 7.15 p.m. curfew. Then, head inside, close your pre-approved window coverings, and isolate your cares and your family from your neighbors, as they're required to do as well. Come, be one of us at Covenant Glen. Conform, conform at Covenant Glen. Covenant Glen, from Gustavo Properties. (laughs) Gustavo! (laughs) If you were going to get a real fucking gimmick, like a real commercial, that's how they should be. Yeah, it would. You know? That you know what you're getting into. No one would move there. It'd be in the... No, I mean, at least better than putting it in the fucking small small print. Anyone that would move there obviously wants to be part of the (laughs) cult. (laughs) My personal opinion. And then, and then, I got to ask, why the fuck are package stores open? On certain holidays. Like, why would, like, New Year's Day package stores be closed? I know. It's terrible. That's just a huge loss of sales on their part. A huge loss Everyone's of sales. looking for a little hair of the dog on the most day of them all, and you're closed. Or they'll, like, close early New Year's Eve so their employees can go to their fucking parties or whatever. And then the rest of us who had to work till fucking 7, 8 o'clock get out and they can't even go to the package store. I didn't have that problem. You did? That sucks. Bro, well, thankfully I had this, the yeah. screwball, you know? Like, that's just shit that happens every year. If you find out they're close. Christmas Day, New Year's fucking day, early New Year's Eve, bullshit like this. Does that make any sense to you? No. This year, thankfully, I thought to pre-plan and bought something for New Year's Day because I knew I was going to You pre-planned. Yeah. Most people would do something like that. I'm not a pre-planner. I like, man, I'm probably going to need one beer or two beers because I'm going to get fucked up tonight. So I saved them. Yeah, that was yeah. smart. Scott, did you have the same problem? Well, I always have enough uh, beers in my fridge, but... <laughs> of course you do. I don't know. Maybe they think uh, December 31st there'll be enough, I, you enough know, people buying stuff that they don't have to worry about the first because everybody's sleeping all day like There's got to be like an app, bro, to find like booze near you. You know how you have like that beer app? Yeah. I'm thinking of something like that, bro, where like you could fucking literally have a, a location finder for the nearest open liquor store, bar, whatever it might be. Or a person that would be willing to sell you a bottle of booze. Right. So something like instead of a GPS, maybe something that's more like a GBS. There's nothing worse than being out on New Year's Eve and not being able to find liquor. Well, now you can with a new GBS Global Booze System. GBS uses 21st century global positioning technology to accurately pinpoint the closest booze source no matter where you are. Uh, come on, you little G- G- GBS. Where's the lick? The ho- Where's the booze? Stumble 10 feet forward. Okay, then. No. Now, lurch five feet left. All righty, okay. Whoa. Your other left. Oh, oh the other way. Gotcha. Oh, right there. Open door. Hey, I made it, everybody. When you need to liquor up, remember GBS, the quicker liquor upper. GBS reminds you, please drink despondently. <laughs> GBS, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so we need, Those we guys need the ripped GPS. the bounty gimmick. The quicker liquor upper. <laughs> the quicker lick the quicker liquor upper, the quicker yeah. picker upper. The quicker picker upper is the paper towels. GBS is the quicker liquor upper. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. And now we gotta get into something serious. I have been informed today, and this is legit breaking fucking news. But I tell you that we have Officially made it to the big time, fellas. Nice. Yep. That's that's. We right. made it to the big time. We are now officially having our DJs get death threats. Fuck you! You thought I was building you up? Swerve. Listen, Damn. I was informed today that a member of our team. Received death threats from a guy who had previously called into the show. That's right. He tried to play stump the Scott, and he got lippy with me. He got an attitude, and I hung up on him. And I'm going to bring you back, Scott and Mm -hmm. Frank, to this moment. And everybody listening at home, (laughs) I have pulled the footage. 
from this episode where he called in and he tried to stump Scott. I think he called twice. Yeah, but this is the one that matters. We're yeah. going to play this for the people at home. Check this out. Oh, you're on the Scooby Blunt podcast. Hey, hey, I'm here to stump the Scott. Oh, oh wait a, a second. Challenger. You're here to stump the Scott? Yeah, that's what I'm about to do. All so right. Anyways, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's talk about this real quick before you go ahead. You know, we got to keep this in line with what's going on. Are you have a you have a question in mind already, or can I give you a theme? No, I'm going to just ask what I ask, and if I stump them, I stump them. I don't like your attitude. <laughs> yeah, you <it> was <laughs> 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 Yeah. I don't like that attitude, you know? It's, I mean, this is my show. This is my goddamn show. This that is Frank Knox's goddamn guy. show. Yeah, that was the same guy they called before, Frank. Uh, oh, Gotch. Frank Crotch? Yeah, Frank. Is the same guy? Yeah. How dare you call in? With an attitude. Yeah, he, being he's, all he's still pissy. Here, he's still here or you hung up on him? I hung up on him. Uh. Listen, I, Aww. Aww. I just want to know. I mean, some well, words. Yeah, well, I just want to let everybody know out there I'm not scared. If he didn't want to be oh, a dick, I know. but this guy called in acting like a dick <laughs> for no <laughs> reason. Yeah, yeah. Dick. He's like, yeah. I called in and I'm going to ask what I want. That's it. It's well, true. aggressive, bro. Like, I just smoked the blood and a half. There ain't no aggressive shit right now. Hello, you're on the 2B block. Whoa. So that's, that's it, man. That's what happened. That's so it, now I guess you're telling me he's still salty. He's still salty, but he's, I don't know why he's salty, but he's still salty. I don't know if it has to do with the show 100%, but he has an issue with me. Like, I've never had anyone have this much of an issue with me. There's always somebody so, I so, know so, has a problem with So he friend. lives, a backstory, he lives on the same street as one of my best friends, you know, sloppy J-O-E. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. and... Every day, you know, I if I go over there, I got to drive by his house. So a couple days ago, driving back there, he picked up a couple Whoppers. You know, we were about to eat some lunch. Whoppers? I come back with the Whoppers. And his hand, I see him because his hand's out the window, but his window's open. So as I drive by, I'm like, this dude's probably, in my head, I'm like, this dude's probably going to, like, give me the fingers on because his hand was up like this as I was driving by. Right. So I look at my rear view and he goes, his hand was like this as a fist. And then as soon as I drive by, he does, like, the 90-degree turn and lifts up the middle finger. No. <laughs> so I'm like, hell no. So I threw it in reverse. You know, part, <laughs> threw it in reverse. It's like, bro, is there any reason why you're giving me the middle finger? Like, if you have a problem with me, let's, you know, basically talk about it is of what course, I'm telling him. Of course. He says, no, man. I didn't give you the middle finger. You know? And then he goes, he blows me a kiss. And he goes, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you're a fucking bitch. And I just drove away. So then he texts the, you know, he's, then he texts an individual saying, I almost took his arm off. He never gave me the middle finger. Yep. He never blew me a kiss because his mouth was full of Reese's Pieces. And he was just sitting in front of his house trying to read the ingredients and realized it was 110 calories per serving of Reese's Pieces. And I'm making this all up. But because I tried to take his arm off with my car. <laughs> He's now going to, if he ever sees me, he's going to murder me. Well, now you're wondering why he's got an issue with and you. And he's sending pictures of a knife. Yeah, and I want to know what his issue. Why did you give me the middle finger? <laughs> he sent you pictures yeah, of a knife, bro? Yeah, my, you know, the person that We're is fucking been, famous. He's sending pictures yeah. of knives saying this is what I carry. You know, and bro, I'm not worried what? about this, this guy. This motherfucker gangsta, bro. But if you had a problem with me and you're going to kill me, when I backed my car up and asked why you gave me the middle finger, I'd be like, I gave you the middle finger because you're a fucking this, 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 and this. Not no, and then pretend you're going to kill me through a text message. Bro. I can see him walking up on Frank with this music playing. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to ask what I want, and that's it. I asked what I asked, that's it, but the guy's got a major attitude, bro. I'm going to ask what I asked, and if I stump him, that's it. So if we would have let him ask, and I w- and he wouldn't have stumped me, would he? Would the death threats be towards me? Then you think? Maybe Scott. No, you might be the next one. It might you might be the next one to get be. him, bro. It might be. You might be the next one to get a shout out to our listener Krista, also online, who's who's watching through the Facebook live app, who said she wanted to let us know that she has incorporated the wording "porch pirates" from last week's show into their weekly vocabulary. That's a great. <laughs> that's nice. a great word. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, because that, that was great. Great. That was great. 
That was great. Two B Blood Podcast. We're about to play. If she stuff wants to tell us or call us in and give us in a sentence mm-hmm. or she's worth the use the word porch pirates. We would love to hear it. At yeah. least I would. I mean, if anybody wants to also play Stump the Sky, 860-384-7110, we're about to get into a special audience slash listener edition. But you got the Frank Max Top 5 first, man. We'll do it after. All right. We'll All do right. it after. He's the smartest. You don't have any brains. I'm from Hollywood. I have the brains. He's unstoppable. Nobody in the whole world can beat me one-on-one right now. It's the hottest game show around. It's Stump the Scott. And now, your host, Bud Griffin. Hi, everybody. Bud Griffin here for another edition of Stump the Scott. Brought to you by the 2B Blood Podcast. Special shout out. To all the wrestling Facebook groups that follow our page, Tap Outs and Pinfalls, Wrestle Chat, Marks for Life, LWD, K Fame, all the gimmicks. I don't know who else I missed, but probably some of them. Shout out because they are the ones providing these questions. These right. questions right here on the 2B Blunt Podcast. If you want to play Stomp the Sky, it's WWE trivia only. 860-384-7110. Ramen on the Facebook. We got Frank's monitoring that shit. So if anybody asks a question, we're going to know. And Scott can't see it. He doesn't have access That's to That's right. It. He doesn't have access to our Facebook. We do that for a reason. I don't. don't I trust haven't him. seen it. We don't trust him. No, I would never let that happen. I, I don't, would never question the integrity of Stump the Scott. Are you sure? I hope not because this is like. Absolutely would This never. is your game show, Scott. And I got to get back into character. God damn it. <laughs> That's all right. I got to get some more peanut butter whiskey. Are you ready to play Stump the Scott? Scott, it's about to be lit AF here on the 2B Blunt Podcast. Are you ready for question number one? I'm ready for the first 2020 edition of Stump the Scott. Let's go, baby. Our first question comes from Kyle in Simi Valley, California. He asked, the Firebirds by Kill Switch Engage was CM Punk's, Punk's entrance theme for majority of his career. Who, on one occasion, used it before him? You have 30 seconds on the clock. Your time starts now. That's a great question. It is a great question. I know the answer, but I don't think it was called the Firebirds. Um, oh, you said Firebirds? Firebirds. Oh, okay. I thought you said Firebirds. I don't Not know. Fire, no, no, Firebirds, yeah, no, Scott. It, you need the this in there. It's this Firebirds. But, very briefly, Randy Orton. That's it. The Scott has come through. Big question number one in the books. Thank you, Kyle. We got three. I got three from the audience. So I'll ask mine and then we'll go with another audience. Sure, let's go. Let's get into question number two. It's going to come from everyone's favorite co host, Frank Knox. Scott, are you ready? I'm ready, baby. Then let's get ready to stop the Scott. Scott, who did Braun eliminate to win the Andre Battle Royal at the WrestleMania we were all at? 30 seconds on the clock. Your time starts now. Okay, so the last person eliminated. Um, I'm pretty sure, I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the last person eliminated was none other than Saturday Night Live's own weekend update uh, host or co-host, um, Colin Jost. Scott, you're correct. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Scott, you are on fucking fire this week. It's amazing. What a grip it here. We're about to get into our third question here on Stop the Scott out of five. Yeah, baby. This one comes from another listener. George, here from right in Connecticut. Are you ready for question uh, number three? The Scott is ready. The Scott. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> Scott, what two WWE superstars that were brothers, technically, at one time or another, had the same first name? 30 seconds on the clock. Your time starts now. All right. I just hope there's not more than one answer, but if you say they had the same first name at one point, so there was Kane, and then when he first debuted... 
Um, he was introduced as Kane the Undertaker. So same first name, Kane. Scott, unbelievable! Wow. Yeah. Three for three. The yeah. Scott is on fire. I can't believe it. Mm-mm. We're about to get right in to question number four. Frank, are you ready to try and play the most epic game show here on the 2B Blood Podcast exclusive property? It is Stump the Scott. Scott, who won the title at the 2019? Who won the United States title at the 2019 Extreme Rules? 30 seconds on the clock. Your time starts now. Hmm. Main event of that show was Rollins and Lynch against Corbin and Lacey Evans. U.S. title, though. Oh, Frank. This might be it. 20 seconds. (laughs) Uh, No, I think I got it. I'm going to say Ricochet. Scott, I'm afraid you're incorrect. No! The correct answer is AJ Styles. Ricochet lost to AJ Styles. No, no, Ricochet lost to AJ on Raw, and then AJ got it. Okay. I was thinking the wrong pay-per-view. I guess this is what happened. Scott's down. It's down. Three to one. Too much peanut butter whiskey. We have one more question from the listeners. I hope you're all ready to play Stop the Scott. Scott, the following question comes from Johnny. He also was the man who stumped you, or... Debatedly stumped you at the With from the, the commodity NWA show. Titles? Yes, Maybe. yes. Oh. It was like Rick Rude and someone else, right? Yes. So he asked, from 1983 to 1985, there was a tag team called the Pretty Young Things. Who were the members of this tag team? <laughs> 30 seconds on the clock. Your time starts now. Do the Michael so, Jackson song. Tell Johnny to get his head out of the 80s, okay? BYT. The Pretty Young Things. <laughs> Was that before or after the Michael Jackson song? Thriller came out in 94, so I mean, it had to have been. Thriller did not come out in 94. 94, I'm sorry, 84. Listen, this guy's got a thing. Um, 10 seconds. <laughs> oh no! Bat, uh, Matt Bourne and uh, and Rick Martell. I'm just guessing names. That is incorrect, Scott. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't think it was right. The members of the Pretty Young Things were Coco Beware and this gentleman by the name of Norvell Austin. Norvell Austin. Okay. In the end, it doesn't even matter because the Scott you went three correct, two incorrect, so you are still undefeated. That, You're on a streak. That's that, that's been his toughest performance in a yeah, long well, time. It was, Great it was a tough one. The audience came through here on 2B uh, Blood. Frank Knox came through with one, too. That's right. I know. Yeah. I mean, it's been crazy. It's now, been crazy. Now, was that tag team? 84? 80, 83, 83 to 85. Oh, wow. So that was I the same year. I feel like they weren't even around that long. That's but. the same year the, the song, PYT, Pretty Young Thing, was released. So there you go. Released, there so. you go. You know what time it is, though. Frank Knox says he's got the top five wrestlers of the decade. Let's get right into it. Frank Knox Top 5 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 2B Blood Podcast Frank Knox is Top 5 Wrestlers of the Decade Let's get right into it, Scott Let's get at number 5 you can't see me, baby, John Cena. Okay. Number four, the phenomenal one man, AJ Styles. Number three, Daniel Bryan. Number two, she pioneered the women's division. She's taking it from the bottom to the top. Ooh. It's none other than Charlotte Flair, baby. Oh, I didn't Woo. Say that and your Frank Knox number one wrestler of the decade. Brock Lesnar, baby! That's right. <laughs> That's it. Huge list. 
useless of the decade. Scott, what do you think about that? I, I, you know what? I like it. Like, maybe the order, maybe I would disagree with, but those top five, they all deserve to be there. Super solid. Super solid. I mean, I can't even disagree. Scott, Brock I mean, Lesnar is got to be a number one, obviously. Is, is, is Brock your number one, though? I, you I, said you disagree with the order, but I, is Brock I, your I number might one? Dis- I'd have to think about it a little bit, but I feel like... What? I, what? He's so, got to think about it, what? he said. So Dude, when he's... When carried he, professional sports he has for, from 2000 to 2000 I mean 2010 to 2019 so, without a doubt so but to, but he didn't come back till 2012 but, granted, but he that's was two wearing years. gold in UFC while he was gone I okay mean, but you said your top pro wrestlers of the decade so I'm come on Scott Brock but, Lesnar baby no, like, he, I up. would say definitely in the top five but I don't know in my mind like you said Daniel Bryan in that list and Daniel Here's Bryan three. He, he started with WWE at the very beginning of 2010, did the NXT, did the whole thing with The Miz. He did. Um, Team Hell No, United States Championship run. But he's also proved the, the to yes not movement, be able to stay re- healthy. Retired, but fought it and came back, he's which is unheard of. He's not able to prove you know, he could stay healthy. <laughs> Brock Lesnar <laughs> is consistent. That's right, Scott. You consistent. can't argue with that. You consistent. can't argue with that. Two no, Real Blood Podcast episode is 25 in the book. Five, Mount Rushmore all time. <laughs> Jericho might have should have been in that top five. I'm just no. saying. No. Listen, if you got nothing for the bottle, comment on the Facebook. Let us know who you think your number one superstar is of the decade. Of the decade. Follow us know. on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at Two Real Blood Podcast with the number two. two. two Real Blood Podcast.com, also with the number two. Subscribe, like our shit. From Frank Knox to Scott and your host, Pete the Double Easy, it is the 2B Blunt Podcast. <laughs>